Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Plumidia back with another Dokkan battle video. So with the highly anticipated Extreme Z Awakening for Int Janemba finally coming to global in less than two days from the time I'm filming this video, I thought it might be a good idea to actually talk about this Extreme Z battle event and give you guys more details about it to give you guys as good of a chance as possible to clear the first 30 levels, get all the medals, and fully awaken your very own Int Janemba. And let me tell you, it is totally, totally worth it because this man is an absolute monster. I mean, of course, I feel like all Extreme Z battle events are worth it, but as far as the unit goes in this case, he is really, really good. And uh, one thing I did want to mention real quick before we get started with the actual details is that if you guys don't have the Int Janemba right now, like not a single copy, it might be really tempting to summon on his upcoming Extreme Z battle banner with the physical Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and uh, someone else, I forgot who else was going to be on it, but either way, it might be really tempting to summon on that banner, right? Because you really want this guy and people keep saying that he's a monster, he's a beast, he's really good, and he really is, like, I can't lie about that. Um, so yeah, that might be an option or something that you're thinking about, but I would actually recommend to wait, at least right now, mainly because the 300 million download celebration is coming up, right? And there's a good chance, a very good chance that we're going to get another red dragon stone for that celebration. And if that's the case, there's also a possibility that this guy will be included in the Bob Shop as one of the units you can exchange that red dragon stone for. And I don't know that for a fact, there's always a possibility that he's not included just because he's the most recent Extreme Z Awakening. But since there's that chance, I don't want anybody to be spending stones, you know, trying to pull this guy and then regretting that, right? So I would say if you guys can wait, then definitely wait, hold on to your stones and uh, wait for that red dragon stone, see what happens there. But either way guys, that's just my recommendation. It's totally up to you on what you want to do. But um, that's a little PSA I want to put out there. And now, without further ado, let's get into this Extreme Z battle uh, detail and, or details rather. And uh, the first thing I'll talk about is the release date. So it says here that it's coming out on August 19th of 2019, which is in about uh, less than two days, like I said. Now, this actually varies depending on where you live, because let's say, for example, you live somewhere that goes by Pacific Standard Time, then in that case, you're actually getting this event very, very late on the 18th of August. Whereas for someone like me that goes by Eastern Standard Time, I'm actually gonna be getting this event very, very early on the 19th. So like I said, it varies depending on your location and your time zone. So for the purpose of simplicity in this video, let's just go with it's about two days away from the time this video drops, all right? And next up is the weakness for this event. And of course, every single Extreme Z battle event ever has had, well, almost anyways, I think, I think they all have a weakness. Maybe, maybe not the free to play ones. I don't really know, but most of them at least have a weakness category or a category that does boosted damage and is just extra effective. And in this case for the Janemba, it's the fusion category, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because in the initial movie where Janemba was introduced for the first time as the main villain, he was fighting against Gogeta, right? So if you guys have a really good fusions team, you should be just fine. And as far as team building goes, as far as what team you should bring, I don't want to get too in depth into it here because it could take a while, but I'll just say, uh, ideally, of course, you want to bring your best possible fusions team. But if not, if you don't have a good fusions team, you could also bring a really good super physical team. And I think that should be good enough. Like. If you have a pretty well optimized super physical team, you should have no problem getting to level 30 and beating it. Um, an extreme physical team could get you probably like 210, 15, maybe even 20. But uh, beyond a certain point, it becomes really, really hard with an extreme physical team, mainly because this guy will eventually get extra damage reduction against extreme types, which makes it almost impossible to beat like a certain point. So. Keep that in mind. So basically, a really good fusions team or a really good super physical team would be perfect. All right, next up are uh, now the levels. So let's start from the very top here. Levels one to three, pretty standard. Almost any like half decent category team should be okay here. And you'll get some orbs as you go along. So some small orbs, level one, medium orbs, and large orbs between level two and three. 
And then beyond level 3, he gets a damage reduction, additional damage reduction of 50% against tech types. So at this point, you may want to remove tech types from your team. Let's say you were running like a uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta on your fusion team, you might want to take him off because he becomes a lot less effective at this point. And uh, you go to levels 4 to 7, you get some more orbs, get some more medals, and you also get a Kai and an additional medal for re-clearing, I believe. Yeah, that's for replays. Okay, so forget that for now. And then beyond level 7, he gets additional damage reduction of 60% against now AGL types and tech types. So at this point, uh, a unit like, let's say, AGL Gogeta Blue becomes a lot less effective because 60% damage reduction is pretty damn high even though he still gets the boost from being a fusions unit um he's gonna be doing significantly less damage so you can still keep him on the team he, he could still do okay probably but um you might also want to remove him because of that reason and then we got levels eight and nine more orbs more medals um beyond level nine it says characters that are ssr or lower can only cause less than two million damage and this was something that was implemented a couple easy A's ago and the effect of this, or the purpose of this, at least I feel like, was really just to make Devilman um, ineffective or useless because in the past, a lot of people who couldn't beat this extreme, these extreme Z battle events were bringing the SR uh, Devilman, right? Or, you know, awaken into SSR Devilman uh, because he has that like 1% chance on his passive to do insane damage or like deadly damage or whatever it's catastrophic damage. I don't remember what the name was, but like just insane damage, you could one shot whatever boss as long as that like passive procs, but it was like a super low chance. And people who couldn't beat these events were bringing him to like level 25, level 30, and so on and so forth to try to get the medals, right? So Bandai was like, nah, we don't want you to do that. So uh, they added this like component or like this feature so that people can't use Devil Man, which I think kind of sucks because it was really hard to do the Devil Man thing, and I feel like if people were willing to go that far to beat the levels, they should be able to do it, but hey, that's just me. Um, I don't work for Bandai, obviously, so I don't make the decisions, but I think it's kind of dumb. Anyways, if you go beyond level 12, he gets now additional damage reduction of 70%. 70% against AGL types, tech types, and int types. So... At this point, your Super Gogeta, your AGL Super Gogeta is really going to be doing quite little damage as well as your Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, um, as well as your actually Int Gogeta as well. Int Gogeta is going to be pretty ineffective here. Still doing damage, don't get me wrong, they're not going to be doing like double digits or triple digits or anything like that, but way below their potential. And um, I would consider, you know, using more uh, STR types if you can or... Uh, Physical, physical types, obviously. I mean, ideally, you would want to bring as many physical types as possible anyways. So uh, if you guys can, as much as possible, bring as many physical types on your team. Even if you're running a fusions team, there are quite a few uh, physical type fusions units that are really, really good, right? Like Super Saiyan 3 Gogeta. Sorry, not Gogeta. Um, Gotenks. I wish was, I wish there was a Super Saiyan 3 Gogeta, man. And um, what else? Like the uh, SEAL tanks, the physical Super Saiyan Go tanks is really good. And then beyond level 19 is what I was talking about with the extreme. So at this point, you will have 80%, 80% damage reduction against AGL types, tech types, in types, and extreme types. So if you guys were using, you know, extreme physical up to this point, it might have been okay. But beyond this point on level 20 and above, it's gonna be, I think, nearly impossible to beat these levels with a extreme type team, even if it is an extreme physical type team with the type advantage. So um, you gotta switch to something else, man. A solid fusions team or a well-optimized super physical team will get the job done, get you all the way to level 30, get all of the remaining rainbow medals, the remaining orbs, the remaining Kai's, and you will be done. You also get the stones, of course. Every single level gets you one stone up until level 30. So that's 30 stones total for clearing the event. And then beyond level 30 is pretty standard. Every single level is going to give you one Platinum Hercule statue, which is which is good for 1.5 million zenny. For those of you that are low on zenny or just want to farm zenny for fun. I know some people are trying to get to a billion. I'm like halfway there, but I don't really need zenny. I don't really care about it. But 
for anybody that wants to get to like the max possible zenny, you know, you can do this and uh, get you a little bit closer. And in total, if we're looking at the total rewards that are uh, acquirable from this event, you're looking at 15 silver, why, why did I say silver? Bronze, <laughs> medals, uh, 40 silver medals, 30 gold, and 30 rainbow, which is all you need to fully extreme Z awaken the Ingenemba. And then you're also looking at 5,200 small in orbs, 4,000 medium in orbs, and 360 um, large in orbs, which is enough to rainbow a int type unit, maybe a Janemba if you haven't invested in him yet. Um, also 11 uh, int Grand Kai's and 30 uh, Dragon Stones in total, which is pretty sweet. And on top of that, there's also some missions that can get you a total of four more stones. So you add those up, that's 34 total stones from the levels and the missions combined. And uh, that is pretty much it for the event. Is there anything else I want to tell you guys? Oh, here's the breakdown of the fusion category if you guys want to see. Um, and as far as physical units go, like I said, there's some good ones. Uh, there's the LR Gogeta, of course, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Go tanks, um, Seal tanks right here. Uh, even Weirus could do okay here. And I guess that's it for your options at the moment. Um, I, I mean, you could bring like this fat tanks here. I don't know if you, is, if he's gonna do anything good here though. Oh, there's also Ch Child Man, or how, how do you say his name? Uh, Ch yeah, Child Man, I guess. Um, this guy we're still missing on global, even though if, even if he did come, he wouldn't be really that good. So that doesn't really matter. But you can also bring STR types because as you guys saw, his damage reduction does not include STR types, right? So STR Gogeta can still be a monster here. This base Go tanks as well as Barlot can probably be pretty solid as well. Um, unfortunately, this base Gogeta is still not on global yet. Bandai, where is he? We are way overdue. I don't know what you guys are doing, but bring this base Gogeta to global, please. It's been way too long. We want him. We have the Dragon Ball Super Broly event. We just need you to add this guy to the final stage and we're good to go, all right? So that's not an option yet, but should be in the near future, I hope. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Middle sum up right there. Um, let's take a quick look now at Janemba himself, and I know I talked about this guy in previous videos, so at this point, if you guys already know what Janemba does, then you can just click off the video, and that's all you need to know. But for anybody that doesn't know what Janemba does, and are wondering why I keep saying he's so freaking good, uh, check this out. So, his Extreme Z Awakened Leader skill is Int Types, Key Plus 3, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 90%. Super Attack is Lightning, Shower, Rain, Extreme, causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense. His passive is Space Domination, Attack and Defense plus 70%, Guard activated against all attacks, medium chance to evade enemies attack including super attacks for one turn, and attack plus 40% for four turns when Guard is activated. And the uh, additional attack boost is actually calculated separately, so you result in a total boost of attack plus 138% after being attacked, and that lasts for four turns. And once the four turns are over, it can be activated again by him getting hit again, right? So overall, just looking at this passive man, um, he gets the attack and defense unconditionally of 70%, and then he activates guard against all attacks, so his defense is very, very good. And he also has, of course, a medium chance to evade attacks after getting attacked, so that adds to his tankiness because he has a very good chance to just take no damage at all. And uh, of course, the damage uh, increase from getting hit as well of 40%, which cumulatively adds up to 138% with the separate calculation, uh, allows him to do a pretty, pretty insane amount of damage. Like high 2 millions, over 3 million I've seen pretty easily. So uh, he hits super hard, he tanks extremely well, um, he's just a really good overall unit. He also lowers the enemy's defense, which I feel like is an underrated trait, um, which allows you to do even more damage because the enemy has lower defense, right? So uh, yeah, overall, this guy's just really good, man. One of the best two-way units in this game as far as like, you know, damage dealing and tanking. Uh, some units are like all tanking or all damage, but this guy is up there with like 
in the same realm, I feel like, as like Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, the STR one. Obviously, not as good of a tank, but he can do more consistent damage. And um, yeah, he's just a really, really good unit. Great two-way unit. I love him. I can't wait to use him on global. Um, and it's going to be an awesome time. So that's pretty much all I want to say in this video, guys. Um, of course, when the Janemba event comes out, I will be streaming it on this channel. So if you guys want to see that and uh, you haven't subbed yet, then make sure you hit that subscribe button right now to join the Tiger Squad and stay tuned for that content as well as, of course, a lot more Dokkan content in the future. And as always, if you guys enjoyed today's video and it helped you in some way or it will help you in some way in the future, then make sure to like the damn video. And uh, that's pretty much all I got to say, guys. I hope you enjoyed as always. And I will see you very, very soon in a future video, whether it's the stream or another info video, the news video or something related to the 300 million download celebration. Who really knows? You guys are awesome for watching, though. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.